Hello everyone, Physics here. Welcome to one of the tutorial. In this one we will talk about the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, AMRAM. We'll go over its configuration, the symbology, its usage against single or multiple targets, as well as how to employ it along with the different radar modes. I covered the radar modes in a previous tutorial, which I recommend that you watch before watching this video. I will leave a link to it in the description and in the info card on the screen. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation about this weapon and its associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to use this weapon effectively. Let's get into it. Set up inside the aircraft. When you're inside the aircraft, go to air to air mode. Alternatively, you can enter the missile override mode by using the switch on your throttle or by using the M key on your keyboard. To exit this mode, if you use the throttle, put the switch back in its original position, or on the keyboard, press the C key. On the SMS page, we have the following OSBs. The first one indicates that we have air-to-air -air missile selected. Pressing it once will select the air-to-air -air gun, which I won't cover in this video. Press it again to go back to air-to-air -air missiles. After that, we have the inventory OSB, which allows you to check what's loaded currently on the aircraft. The following OSB takes us to the control page, which I will cover later. The next OSB shows the currently selected missile type and quantity, currently 6. Press it to cycle through the different types of missiles if multiple types are loaded on the aircraft. Along the bottom it's displayed in which stations the currently selected missile is loaded on. You can cycle the stations by pressing the OSBs next to them, or by pressing the nose wheel steering button on your stick when in the air. The next OSB tells the missile the physical size and radar cross-section of the target it's going after. This will change the fusing setting on the missile. The sizes can be either unknown, small, medium, and large. If you're unsure, select unknown. Pressing the next OSB and selecting slave option ties the missile to the radar and prepares it for launch against the designated target. On the other hand, selecting the bore option centers the missile diamond on the HUD horizontally and position it 6 degrees below the boresight cross. We will look at the symbology a little later as well. On the control page there isn't anything essential to missile usage. The only thing here that's worth noting is the missile sequence number which assigns an ID to a missile as it's launched. The missile ID serves an additional purpose as a synchronization and identification pattern within the data link system. This enables the AIM-120 in flight to distinguish its own data link messages from those intended for other missiles. Missile Symbology When you lock a target, you will see the symbology for the missile shown on the heads-up display. The same information is repeated on the FCR page. On the center of the HUD we have the following information. The TD box with the target's altitude underneath the attack steering queue, which is the smaller circle, the allowable steering error circle, which is the larger circle that varies in size. Along the outer edge of it, we have the target's aspect angle, represented by a triangle. In order to shoot a missile with a relative degree of accuracy, you have to use the symbology in relation with each other. To put it simply, you should try to put the smaller circle inside the bigger circle, in order to give the missile the best possible angle to track correctly. Having the TD box inside the bigger circle is not a requirement. Along the right hand side of the HUD, we have the dynamic launch zone symbology. This symbology will change with more information added as the target gets closer to your aircraft. On top we have the loft solution queue. This is shown when the target enters the following mark, which is the range aerodynamic. This is the absolute maximum range of the missile. When inside the range aerodynamic, if you pitch up to match the value shown in the loft solution queue, the missile estimates that there is a marginal chance of hitting the target if the target is non-maneuvering. Personally, I find this manner of shooting the AMRAM quite unreliable, so I wouldn't recommend using it. The following mark is range optimal. This still means that if you shoot the missile at this point, it's still stretching its range, but it has a higher probability of hitting the target. 
This estimation still assumes that the target is non-maneuvering. Next we have the in-range zone. If you shoot within this zone, the missile has a higher probability of tracking and hitting the target even if it maneuvers. However, the target can still outrun the missile if it turns away. Finally, we have the maneuver zone. If you shoot within this zone, the target can't outrun the missile. It will have to try to defeat the missile by using countermeasures and defensive maneuvers. Along the left of the DLZ, we have the closure speed as well as the distance at which the target will be from your aircraft when the missile goes active. In this case, the closure speed is 1190 knots and the target will be at 15 miles from my aircraft when the missile goes active. As you approach the target, you will see that the cross inside the TD box is starting to blink. You will also see the digital maneuvering cue. This is the heading change the target has to make in order to degrade the AMRAM from high hit probability to nominal. When the target is within the maneuver zone, you will notice the following. First, the big circle will start to blink. Additionally, along the DLC, the F-Pole will be displayed. Contrary to what was displayed on there before, the F means that the missile will come off the rail active, and it estimates that the target will be impacted by the missile at 4 nautical miles from our aircraft. Shooting the AMRAM You can launch the AMRAM using any of the radar modes. For this example, I will select the most reliable mode against single targets, STT. For this example, I will take the shot as the target enters the in-range zone. I press and hold the weapon release button, Fox 3. We now have some more information under the DLZ. The A-pole is repeated, showing the distance the target will be from your aircraft when the missile goes active, in this case, 13 miles. Underneath you will see a counter in seconds that can mean different things depending on the symbology. Time to activate, represented by an A, is the time left for the missile to turn on its own radar seeker head. Medium pulse repetition frequency, MPRF, represented by an M, refers to the time at which the missile will no longer be reliant on the launching aircraft's radar to guide itself. Impact, represented by a T, indicates the estimated time until the missile impacts the target. Termination, represented by an L, indicates the time left until the missile times out as it's lost the original target. Additionally, on the FCR and the HSD, the icons shown on the image will be displayed. The ones relevant after taking a missile shot are the following. A purple symbol, which means that the target has a missile going for it, but the missile is still inactive. A red symbol with a dash across it, which means that the target has a missile going for it, and it's currently in MPRF. A red symbol with a cross over it means that the missile is in its terminal phase and will impact the target in the time shown on the HUD and the FCR. Finally, a red symbol with lose under it means that the missile lost track to this target. I'll now demonstrate the whole process from launch to impact without interruptions.
shooting two targets using SAM. With Situation Awareness Mode, you can shoot two missiles at two different targets at the same time. While in RWS mode, start tracking a target. Then, pick a second one, pressing TMS forward once your cursor is over that target. Once you shoot a missile at the first target, press TMS right to cycle to the next target, and shoot that one as well. As you can see, while the missiles are in the air, I'm cycling through the targets to check the information on them. The information I'm mostly concerned with is the time left until the missile goes active and the time left until the missile impacts. Additionally, I'm manipulating my radar to make sure that both targets stay within the azimuth range. There is one splash. And there's the second one. Shooting multiple targets using TWS mode. Truck wall scan allows you to shoot multiple targets at the same time. Simply select the first target, launch the missile, then cycle to the next target using TMS right, launch the missile at it, and repeat the process for all targets you wish to engage. Final considerations. When shooting the AMRAM, try to be as high and as fast as you can for optimal results. At higher altitudes, the missile will have to travel through less dense air, thus increasing its range and energy. Also, the faster your aircraft is, the higher the missile's initial speed will be also when it's launched. The AMRAM's rocket motor will always burn for approximately 6 to 8 seconds, so if it's fast to begin with, the faster it can get at the end of the burn. This also improves range and energy. And there we have it. The AMRAM is the primary weapon of the Viper for BVR engagements. While it's quite consistent in its lethality, it's by no means a one-shot, one-kill weapon. Always try to be at the optimal conditions before shooting, and monitor your target. If required, take a follow-up shot. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.